Amir Khan quits in the sixth round against Terence Crawford. Crawford therefore retains his WBO World Welterweight title. Now, before I get to my assessment of Crawford's performance, I first want to address the ending of the fight. Amir Khan was hit with a low blow. He went to the corner to recover and he never came out. He waited in the corner until his trainer, Virgil Hunter, took the cue because he knew that Khan wanted out and he told the referee to stop the fight. I think he might have asked Khan, do you want to continue? And Khan said no. So Virgil Hunter helped him out and stopped the fight on Khan's behalf. So Khan definitely quit. But unlike a lot of people out there, I'm not going to condemn the man for quitting. Why? Because he has shown so much heart in the past. He's been in fights where he could have quit before and he didn't. He fought through. So him showing this one moment of weakness doesn't erase all the heart he's shown in the past. In the end of the day, I've never been in Khan's position. You know, check my resume. I've got a history on this channel of going easy on fighters who quit. Now, it's on a case-by-case basis, of course, but there have been numerous times fighters have quit and I've gone easy on them. For example, when David Price quit against Sergei Kuzmin, I went easy on him. When Kel Brook quit against Errol Spence, I went easy on him. Why? Because I've never been knocked out a bunch of times like David Price has. I don't know how I'd feel to be in his shoes, fighting with an injury, knowing I could be knocked out again and take yet another trip to the hospital. I've also never had a fractured eye socket like Kel Brook had, where I was a punch or two away from being potentially blinded for life. I've never been in that position. I don't know the pressure of being in that situation. And the same goes for Amir Khan. Khan has come through numerous wars and KO losses in the past. All those trips to the hospital, all the pain, all the cuts, the bruises, the concussions, the brain scans, the stitches. Think about that. Put yourself in that position. All the days pissing blood. Khan has been through that numerous times. I don't know what it feels like to have those memories in the back of your mind when you're taking a beating from Terence Crawford, one of the best fighters in the world, knowing that you're on the verge of repeating that same nightmare of being knocked out again. I don't know how that feels. I don't know how it feels to know that you're lucky to have survived all the beatings you've taken previously and escaped serious brain injury but knowing that your luck could run out at any time. Imagine yourself in that position when you're in there against Terence Crawford before you call Amir Khan a coward. Before you call David Price a coward or you call Kel Brook a coward. Imagine yourself in that position. And truth be told, Terence Crawford's never been in that position. Terence Crawford's such a fantastic fighter. He's never been in a position where he suffered a bunch of KO losses. Fractured eye sockets and all that kind of stuff. Who's to say that he wouldn't quit in a similar situation when he's been knocked out a bunch of times in the past and taken all kind of beatings and loads of trips to the hospital, pissing blood and fractured eye sockets, bust noses, concussions. Terence Crawford ain't been through that. He's too good to have gone through that. Okay, I boxed as an amateur, but I certainly never went through all that stuff I've just described. You know, a couple times where I saw double, Maybe a mild concussion here and there, but nothing to the extent of what Khan and Price, etc. have been through. So it would be a bit rich for me to sit here and call them men cowards when I've never stepped in their shoes and been through what they've been through. I am sometimes harsh on fighters cheating because, again, I've been in the ring. I've been in situations where I'm dominating a fight. I feel no reason to lean all over the guy, pull his head down, rag him around, I feel no reason to do that when I was fighting. If I'm dominating a guy, I'm bigger and stronger than him. Why am I also cheating on top of that? Pushing his head down and ragging him around, not even in sparring. <laughs> Did I ever do anything like that? Yeah, if you, you got all the advantages over somebody, why are you cheating for? You're already beating the guy. Ain't no reason to be leaning on him every second and pushing him down and ragging him around like a rag doll, like Klitschko against Povetkin. Nah. That I will criticize. But when a guy is taking a terrible beating, 
And he's been knocked out a bunch of times before. I mean, let me not say Khan was taking a terrible beating, but he was losing a fight and he knew what was coming. And he'd taken loads of beatings in the past and devastating knockout defeats and then shown loads of heart in the past. That's a different kind of situation. I've never been in that situation there. <laughs> you know, with all that psychological trauma in my mind from what I've been through before. Never been in that situation. So I can't judge the man. Amir Khan, prior to this Crawford fight, has shown more fighting heart in his career than all of us sitting here combined. That's the reality of it. But as a fighter, you can only go to the well so many times, not just physically, but also psychologically. Sometimes, or very often, actually, you get courage from belief. You might be taking a beating. You might be behind on the scorecards. You might have been down several times. But you still hold on to this little belief in the back of your mind that you can pull this thing around and win. But in this case here with Amir Khan, yeah, he knew he'd been knocked out a bunch of times in the past. But he'd never been outboxed before. Against Terence Crawford, he was being outboxed. In his mind, he thought, there's no way I can win. The only way this is going to end is with me stretched out on the canvas like I've been so many other times in the past. I don't want that again. I don't want to push my luck with my health. I know how it feels to go to the hospital in them situations, getting the stitches in your mouth. The brain scans, the concussions, the slurred speech in the days after the fight. I want to go through that again. I've proven my heart already to these people. They want me to go through the same situation over and over and over forever I can't blame Khan for bailing out man <laughs> he took care of his health he's shown enough heart in the past for me to call him a warrior it is what it is you know um he was being out but I mean look you could take the bravest boxer in the world put him in the ring with a grizzly bear what's he gonna do he's gonna run for his life why because he doesn't believe he can win <laughs> Khan might have, as well have been in there against the Grizzly Bear with Crawford. He didn't believe he could win. Whether you think he could have won is irrelevant. It's what he thought in his own mind. Khan didn't believe he could win. Maybe when he was younger and he had more of a chip on his shoulder and more to prove, he would have carried on anyway. Just out of pride and ego and machismo. But at this stage of his life, at this stage of his career, being through all the stuff he's been through before, he just thought, nah, man, I don't need this no more. And he bailed out. I can't blame him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I ain't been through what he's been through. And then you're in there against one of the best fighters in the world and he's putting a terrible beating on you. <laughs> Who's to say that I wouldn't have done the same in his situation? Who's to say that you wouldn't have done the same in his situation? Who's to say that Crawford wouldn't have done the same in his situation? Remember, it's, you have to put his situation in context. It's not just him quitting in a fight he doesn't think he can win. It's him quitting in a fight he doesn't think he could win where he's been dropped and he's taken a beating against one of the pound for pound best when he's been knocked out a bunch of times in the past, when he's taken terrible beatings a bunch of times in the past, when he's had to fight through tremendous adversity a bunch of times in the past. You can only go to the well so many times. Evander Holyfield, as great a warrior as, warrior as he was, eventually quit late on in his career against Sherman Williams, a journeyman. Yeah, Holyfield quit in that fight. Because he went to the well and it was no longer there. The determination that he had when he was younger, the spirit for battle that he had when he it was no longer there. It had been beaten out of him. And it had been beaten out of Khan too. He didn't have it no more. Even the great Roberto Duran quit in the rematch against Sugar Ray Leonard. Is he a coward too? Because Duran showed tremendous heart and fighting spirit on numerous occasions in his career. But that time against Leonard in the rematch, he quit. I'm not going to condemn a guy who's a coward for showing a moment of weakness when in the rest of his career he's been nothing but a warrior. It doesn't make any sense. It's just humid at the end of the day. Anyway, Getting on to Terence Crawford's performance, he dealt with Amir Khan's speed very well. I mean, Khan might not be quite as quick as he used to be, but he's still quick. 
Terence Crawford's hands were quick too, and his timing was far better than Khan's. You know, Khan, I've mentioned this before, for all, all his athleticism, has never had a high boxing IQ. And that showed very early on in his fight. And, you know, Amir Khan's normally a fast starter. He normally has success early. I thought he might have some success early here before inevitably getting, you know, beaten later on. But no, it was a terrible start for Khan. He was dropped in the first round. He's normally the guy dropping the opponent. But no, the opponent dropped him this time around. Crawford had, had him timed early. It normally takes an opponent a few rounds to figure out the timing with Khan because he's so fast. But Crawford had him timed real quick. And it was all downhill from there. The second and third rounds were relatively close, I guess. You know, if you wanted to, you could maybe give Khan one of those rounds two at best. Uh, I think all the judges had Crawford winning every round, and I can't argue with that either. But, you know, round two and three were relatively close. They were kind of a chess match. So, you know, there's some room there for interpretation if you wanted to give Khan one or two of those rounds. Uh, but Crawford never looked disturbed in those rounds. He never looked bothered. He still looked very happy and confident. And then in the fourth round, he put it on Khan. Uh, Khan, at the end of the fourth, told his trainer Virgil Hunter that he hurt his hand. And to me, that was a sign that Khan wanted out from then. Came out in the fifth, had a bit of a better round, but then the sixth round, he got hit low and he found his opportunity there to quit. And he took it. Virgil Hunter took the cue, you know. <laughs> he knew that his fighter wanted out of there because he was taking a very long time in the corner. And Virgil Hunter saved him. So it is what it is. Terence Crawford did a good job on, yeah, past it Khan, but nobody's ever outboxed Khan before for whatever that's worth. Terence Crawford did. He outboxed him, he beat him up, and he forced him to quit. So, you know, that's something he can put on his resume at the end of the day. Maidana put a hellacious beating on Amir Khan. Khan didn't quit. You know, even Lamont Peterson whooped Amir Khan like an octopus, as Angel Garcia said. I mean, it was a very controversial fight on the scorecards, but the point is, Lamont Peterson pressured Khan the whole fight and hit him with a hell of a lot of punches. Khan didn't quit. I mean, even when Khan was getting ragdolled by Danny Garcia, he didn't quit. I mean, at the end of the fight, Khan was absolutely mash up against Danny Garcia and he was disappointed that the referee stopped it. That's how much heart Khan shown in previous fights. But there's only so many times you can do that psychologically. Do you understand? There's only so many times in your head you can push your luck we are taking them kind of beatings. Do you know how fighters feel when they've taken a beating like Khan took against Madonna or Danny Garcia and they wake up in the morning? Do you know how that feels? Pissing blood, the concussions, the bruises, the cuts. Slurred speech. You know, when Tim Bradley fought Provodnikov, he had slurred speech after that for months, he said. This is the reality that these warriors, these fighters live through when they have these wars. And suffer these knockout defeats. It's all very entertaining for us watching on television. But we're not the ones in there taking the punches. And dealing with the aftermath after the fight. The physical aftermath. The psychological aftermath. It's not easy. You know so many of these keyboard warriors. Running around saying Khan's a coward. And this that and the other. Since they've got so much heart. Since these guys think they've got what. The heart of Muhammad Ali and Rocky Marciano. They should take up a career in boxing. These keyboard warriors, since they've got so much heart, since they would never quit in them situations there when they've suffered a bunch of KO defeats and been through wars with Maidana. I mean, how many of these keyboard warriors calling Khan a coward could go 12 rounds with Maidana and not quit? Huh? How many of them would, sta would stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe with Maidana and take the beating and get knocked out, keep getting up off the floor? Now, obviously, Khan didn't get dropped in the fight, but I'm using it as an example to show you that it's easy to sit behind your keyboard and, and point fingers when you've never been in that situation. You know, I boxed as an amateur. I took a few beatings, but nothing like Khan took. <laughs> you know what I mean? I never quit, but I've never been in situations like Khan's been in or Kel Brook's been in. It's fractured eye socket. And then you go into the Errol Spence fight and you get another fractured eye socket and the doctor already told you you could go blind. I've never been in that position. So who the hell am I to say Kel Brook is a coward? Maybe I would have quit in his position, knowing that I could go blind. You know? 
Most of these keyboard warriors definitely would. <laughs> and I say keyboard warriors because they're calling Khan a coward. Most of them would have quit. So it is what it is. Anyway, Bud Crawford's performance was a good one. He did what he had to do. It's unfortunate that there's this cold war that exists between Bob Arum's top rank and Al Heyman's PBC because the biggest fights in the welterweight division are not happening. And the, the very biggest is, of course, Terence Crawford versus Errol Spence. That's the one we all want to see. But there seems to be a serious problem getting that made. Bob Arum a few weeks ago said that he would be reaching out to Errol Spence's people after this Crawford Khan fight with a view to making Crawford Spence. Whether he will or not remains to be seen. And even if he does, does Al Heyman really want to put Spence in there with Crawford? And it's not a case of Heyman being afraid for his fighter in terms of not believing he can win. It's more a case of business, of Al Heyman trying to keep it all in-house. Knowing that, yeah, his fighter could beat Crawford, but it's a 50-50. Crawford could beat his fighter too. So why not have some in-house fights? Why not have the Spence against Pacquiao or Spence against Thurman, etc.? Spence against Sean Paul. Why not have them kind of fights? You can make some money off that for a while before even contemplating putting one of his top guys in against Terence Crawford. So it is a frustrating time in the welterweight division. Crawford might have to get creative, you know? And there's a potential Crawford versus Kell Brook fight that could also be made. I mean, since the PBC guys ain't going to be allowed to get in the ring with Terence Crawford, it would seem, maybe he can beat up another Brit <laughs> in Kell Brook. Uh, I do think that Kell Brook would be probably a tougher fight than the Khan fight because Brook does have better punch resistance. I would still definitely pick Terence Crawford to beat Kell Brook, obviously, but he's a bigger guy than Khan, stronger, hits harder, better punch resistance. So maybe Terence Crawford could look at that. Kell Brook was ringside for the fight, or at least in attendance for the fight. So uh, maybe he's got that in his mind. Maybe Eddie Hearn can try and make that happen. So... Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And how far up the divisions can Terence Crawford really go? Because he came he came from, what was it? Was it lightweight he originally started at? Or was it super featherweight? I forget now. I think it was lightweight. He's made his way up through the divisions. He looks to be, you know, not the smallest welterweight you've ever seen. He looked a decent size in there against Khan, you know? So can he go up to 154 for the right fight? Is that too far? Because again, I'm saying this, because he might have to get creative if the PVC guys ain't going to fight him. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Terence Crawford's performance, about Amir Khan quitting. And he did quit, you know, sometimes with certain fighters who the British public are really, um, really mad about or have a lot of affection for. There's a reluctance to call a spade a spade to say the guy quit when he actually quit. You know, when Kell Brook quit against Errol Spence, a lot of people in the British boxing media and a lot of the British boxing public were reluctant to say Kell Brook quit. He quit. Doesn't mean he's a coward. Doesn't mean that you or me wouldn't have quit in the same situation as him, but he did quit. Just as Khan quit here against Terence Crawford. I ain't judging the guy, all right? But he did quit. Let's just call it what it is. Some fighters are a bit different in the head. You know, there's, there's levels to courage. As I mentioned before, you put the bravest guy in against a grizzly bear, he's going to run because <laughs> he knows he can't win. But there are some guys who are so off key in the head that they might actually fight the grizzly bear. <laughs> some guys are that crazy. You know, I mean, for example, in MMA, most fighters, when they get put in an arm bar, which they can't get out of, they're going to quit before they have their arm broken. But you do get some guys who actually don't quit and they let you break their flipping arm. You know, I've seen that actually, <laughs> where a guy, uh, you know, allowed his arm to be broken rather than tapping out. Most fighters, most UFC fighters, you know, MMA guys, they'll tap out before you break their arm. And even that guy who I saw having his arm broken rather than tapping out, would he do that again? If someone had, had him in an arm bar again, would he have his arm broken rather than tap out again? And how many times would he be willing to do that in his career? Let's say he did it again. 
and got his arm broken the second time. Would he do it a third time, a fourth time? I mean, somebody's, everyone's got their breaking point at the end of the day. 99.9% .9 of people have their breaking point. Where, yeah, you might have not tapped out from an arm bar before and had your arm broken, but you're not going to do it every single time. Eventually, you're going to tap out. <laughs> you know? Amir Khan tapped out tonight. It is what it is. Uh, should Khan retire? Will the Kell Brook fight be there? I mean, if Kell Brook can get a fight against Terence Crawford, then I don't think he's really going to care about Amir Khan. But if he can't get that fight, then maybe he will look to fight Khan. Khan, to me, looks finished at this point. I think his confidence is probably going to be shot because now he knows he can be outboxed as well as knocked out. His punch resistance is as bad as ever. The first time Terence Crawford clipped him with anything remotely resembling a solid punch, Khan's legs were all over the place and he was down in the first. So it doesn't look good for Khan. He might want to get out now before the situation gets far worse for him. He's been a very entertaining fighter over the years. An entertaining character in and out of the ring, you know, often without meaning to be. <laughs> you know, no disrespect to Khan, but his reckless and impulsive nature has led him to make some very unfortunate decisions, both in and out of the ring, which I can't lie, have been entertaining at times. But I've also found Khan's successes to be entertaining. You know, he's just provided entertainment for me all round. I can't hate on the guy. <laughs> is he a bit of a, a a foolish individual of course he is of course he is but you know all the frills and spills and entertainment he's given me over the years you know it, it more than makes up for this one occasion where he decided to quit so is what it is let me know what you guys think in the comment section below what's happening about join me on patreon i upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.